Hey everyone, Struggle Lions here out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie's still here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And, uh, oh. Dallas. <laughs> yeah, and Dimitri, our, our guest presenter today is, uh, where was it, Belgium? Actually, I, I couldn't remember. Um, yes, I'm from Belgium. I thought it was Southern Texas with that accent, but um, anyway. Uh, so we're at the, uh, I believe, 62nd Auto Hotkey webinar, which again, it's a sounding number. Um, and here's some info from Jackie and I. Let's go on to the next slide. Um, there's 112 registrants. Now we know most people just watch the you know, things after and get the resources. So we don't expect everybody here. Although everyone starts off muted. Everyone, I think I recognize everybody here. So you all know this. Um, we don't mute you because we want to be blabbering. It's just because with too many people talking, it gets very confusing fast. So if you have a question, you know, ask in the chat, which Jackie or I will be monitoring. Um, or, you know, if you want, ask it, you know, mention you have a question and then we'll wait until Dimitri's done talking or whoever's talking and then bring it up at a good time. But uh, yeah, that's that's how that goes. And then also we're going to start off in this one with, with talking about version two, which I'm really excited to hear more about. Um, however, after the first hour, you know, if, if we have some Q&A on it, then if you have a specific question with something you're working on, we're more than happy to try to help you with that. So stick around if you aren't interested in version two, but you'll know, have a question for us. Yeah. Um, let me copy and paste all of this for some of our recent podcasts. Um, the, my, my favorite one was the why being five reasons for being a pighead is a good thing. Uh, but um, this other one on, on, you know, trying to increase the likelihood that your script will run on multiple computers is a really good topic, especially if you're new. That's very confusing. Um, and this last one we did uh, talking about it, actually, um, I would love, we should have, if we had thought ahead of time, we would have asked Sean to come on as well and had his, his thoughts on it, of whether you should be selling something as a subscription-based versus a one-time fee or, or doing both. Um, it was an interesting conversation, especially with the way the world's going um, and the pros and cons of each each approach. Yeah. All right. So uh, the script highlight, and now let me let me paste the link to this in case anyone's interested. This is where you can get it. So, and we did it live in a in a webinar. I'm sorry, in a video. Isaiah and I were. Um, I told him somehow we came to the topic of so something we had had to run in version 32. Um, bit version of, of auto hotkey and I like normal um, I'm going to pull up my I am sharing my screen right yeah you are Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The, the highlighting is gone for some reason so here if I go this is quick access pop up if I come under here under a hotkey um, I had some stuff for uh, it's funny I, I rewrote um, and from, so force as 64 bit, you know, 32 bit and 64 bit. Um, this is code I, I, in my little templates, I could inject that would tell auto hotkey, make sure, you know, when this launches to relaunch it, if it's not in the right bitness. Um, these were two different, you know, complete things of code and, and the code was so similar. And I said, Hey, you know what, Isaiah, this is a great example where a function just passing a parameter is, a, is perfect. So let's record a video on it. Um, but I just wanted to, to to provide it here. So that's the link. You can download it. And you can just basically launch it with either one of these, right? This is run 64 or run 32. And that will force, you just put that above in your script. Of course, include the function either in your library or in the code. And it will force AutoHockey to run in that bitness. Uh, with the with the AutoHockey U uh, Unicode version, that is. We, we tied it to that just because that's the one we, we typically use. But... Um, yeah, it's a cool little thing that I, I wish this was something built into AutoHotKey that I could, you know, force that on its own without having to create it. Because the code itself is, um, it's not complex, but it, it is, you know, sort of confusing in that sense. And you have to search for it. And so this is a, just a great easy way. It would just be nice to be able to have that option to set it uh, as, I guess, a, what would you say, Jackie, a, a directive maybe to be able to control that? Yeah, yeah, that would probably be one way to do it for sure. So yeah, so um, if you ever have anything now, I, I typically run into it with like com objects or uh, uh, parsing a JSON. Although uh, Geek Dude, who's here now, and I mentioned a few minutes ago, his new version of the C JSON parser now works in both sixty four bit and thirty two bit. So kudos to you, 
Um, and Geek Dude, for all, you know, and all you got, everyone that's doing developing stuff, I was going to say a big shout out to Lexicos when they get into version two, is these people put in a lot of time and they, they help all of us. And I always feel kind of guilty, but because um, I don't know if they ever get the love that they're deserved. You know what I mean, they hear it back a lot. I think they'll see posts here and there, but we all owe them a huge amount of, of debt. Uh, that's just awesome. So thanks everybody for, for all the work you guys do and everyone running the forum and stuff. It's crazy. Okay, Dimitri, and I had put this together. We'll share this in resources, but this isn't something I was going to share. Dimitri, do you want to share from your desktop, or you want me just to flip the screen? The I'll uh, I'll start sharing. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, um, as probably most of you guys know, uh, there's actually a, a kind of good side uh, to display all the changes of uh, version 1 to version 2, actually 1.1 to version 2. But um, I try to uh, come up with some examples to to display, to make it a little bit more concrete what, what is actually changing. And also, I know some things that could really uh, fuck up your code if you don't convert it correctly. That even you, you don't get errors, but you will get uh, yeah some trouble. So, main part, probably, everybody here knows, um, the everything is now expressions. I love it actually because sometimes I was wondering uh, should I type text or should it be a variable? It's it's more clearly defined and more consistent that you always just use expressions. I think that every everything is just a function that's quite just easy for me. Um, the thing that you will probably encounter is that uh, you will get errors when a variable is not declared. For example, this code would uh, result in, in this error. And it seems annoying, but it prevents mistakes when, when coding. If you mistype your variable name, then you will would, it's possible that you wouldn't e even notice it. And I like it because your code will become better by it. Yeah. Oh. And yeah, like I already told, uh, every command is now just functions. So that also means that you can get a return value. It can be an object or just a string. Uh, for example, the our uh, message box has uh, also become a function, and it will result uh, a string that that will will display what what happened with the me message box. Um, if the timeout occurred or which button is pressed, uh, things like that. So that also means that some some special quirks of version one aren't necessary anymore, and yeah, it's it's actually less commands in total. Yeah, that was one of the really interesting things that I had read was that everything now is a function, and if I remember right, you don't even need the parens, which. To me, it really confuses the, the crap out of me, but um, it, it was interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, here is an example of uh, some functions that will start returning objects. And uh, for the input box, for example, it will get uh, your value but also the result if something is cancelled and things like that. So 
it will take some time to to understand it and to to use it but i think in the end it's it's way easier now dimitri and i don't want to throw you off course here but um did you look into a bit of the the uh either like performance as far as that is is that going to be pretty consistent is it is this the, the major changes having more to do with being consistency than it does any sort of anything to do with performance uh, I haven't checked it, but uh, from what I read from the forum, it's apparently also an upgrade for the uh, the speed would also be greater. So, but we we should actually do some ben. It would be a nice topic to do some benchmarking on it. Um, but that will probably also depend on what you're testing, and some things will greatly improve, and other will. Be probably be exactly the same. Yeah, and and I know at least I'm sorry. My understanding was a lot of the changes that Lexicos was making was to to tie up some of the not arbitrary, but you know the kind of craziness on on how code was orig not originally, but you know implemented. Um, however, to me, one of the big strengths was that auto hockey code was so simple for noobs, right? People coming in, it was very, very easy to understand. And the stuff in version two is going to, in my opinion, and I'm not knocking it because I, I think it's a good move overall, but it's just, it's not going to be as easy for people who don't ever program to start learning how to program in auto hockey. Yes, it's, it's less forgiving. That's yeah, okay. It's, it's less forgiving. Uh, um, it will demand of you to just always use uh, expressions, but on the other end, it's, it's simpler. I find it simpler. Right. Yes. It's, 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 it's always the same. And in version one, you had sometimes you need to do it like that and sometimes like that. Um, it's funny, Gabe Cook here, he, he's my, my code, codecation buddy that, you know, we usually every year we take like a codecation or we program together. And for, um, you know, about a year and a half or so, we were trying to learn Python. And both of us, when we were first started learning Python, we, we didn't like how constrained we were and how we had to do things. And then later, I think we both also agreed it was like, it actually did. It was a plus. It seemed like it was a negative, but it was a plus. It forced us to, you know, have your space delimited things in a certain way. And it was just, it, it really was a benefit. And it's just going to be painful if you were used to the old way switching over. But once you get used to it, I think it's great. I, I read here on the, on the chat that uh, they're a little bit concerned about the conversion. The, the, the scripts to to version two, but uh, actually I'm I'm currently working on the on the converter, and um, it's actually quite working better and better. But the only thing is, um, if the changes are large, um, I'm not sure if I can handle everything. Um, but I'll. I'll, I can show you a demonstration of it later on. Um, yeah, for example, but I'll talk about the difficulties uh, a little bit later. Let's first uh, see the examples. Uh, I may, this is also something very pretty. pretty like, ah, damn it, my English. Um, if you have arrays on the version one, it behaves different than in version two. If you have brackets or you use a point, it's different. And in version two, it's the same. I can demonstrate it for you. So let's test it in uh, version one. Then we just get the, the text of the the first variable of the, the array. And if you run the same in version two, you, you will notice that you don't have the property uh, called, uh, yeah, that it's just, no, the element doesn't exist, I think. 
So that's something that could really, if you're working a lot with arrays, you'll need to be careful that, uh, and you'll, you'll need to understand it quite good to, to fix it. Um, another thing, uh, something quite easy to fix, uh, is just that all your hotkeys are now actually the same as functions. You'll need brackets for them. Interesting. Yes. Uh, another thing that you, but this is actually quite easy to convert. Um, if you have a by ref variable, oh, I have made it. Oh. <laughs> uh, you'll need to add a, what's, what's the, it's it ampersand? Yeah. Yes, indeed. You need to have an ampersand before the name, else you'll you'll also get an error. Uh, it's actually I'm not really sure why why they done this, but yeah, it's again more consistent. Uh, and. Um, what is also quite kind of strange, um, if you want to loop or just any command, the first variable doesn't require a, a comma if you use a, the command syntax. And that's, I think most of the people find it very strange because yeah, it's totally different from version one. Well, I mean, in, in version one, and a lot of times that first comma is optional, right? I don't know about loop, but in, in other things, it's optional, right? If you don't. Um, yeah, I always use it. Yeah, it's and the I, same with message box and all kinds of different commands where you don't really need the first comma. But I think in uh, version two, it's. Um, you, it's not optional anymore. You, it requires a space. Okay. And of course, the, the GUI eyes are, are really totally changed. Uh, there are no objects, just. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like objects uh, programming, then you'll probably hate it. But but. I find it more consistent, and if you understand it a little bit, it's 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 simpler to to implement. You know, I didn't think about it, but I know uh, site for auto hotkey uh, with the version one point two and whatever it you you couldn't have the it couldn't easily keep track of where you were in the parameters because of how commas were used in commands versus in functions. And maybe in version two, that'll, you know, they could actually control for that better. It'll be easier. Um, so, so it might be easier for some editors to do their IntelliSense type stuff, which would be nice. Yeah, that's true because version two is way more consistent. Uh, I actually also have written some functions to try to uh, separate uh, the, the parameters of the commands and to determine when a comma is uh, meant as text or when it's meant as a separator of a variable. And it's quite hard to do in uh, auto hotkey version one because yeah, sometimes it's almost impossible to know. And it's all also mainly depends on the functions what makes it quite hard. Uh, Allow try to um, demonstrate my converter a little bit. Uh, ah, also something that I read was what was kind of interesting. You uh, version two has also nested functions. I'll open it. 
So you can have a function inside a function that you can only use inside the main function, actually. And that I think it's also quite interesting if you want to specify a special GUI, for example, with some special commands and you do not want to interfere with the rest of the program. Nested functions are interesting. Yeah, it hurts my brain a little to think about it, but yeah. Keep you track of all that. That's awesome. It's it's kind of special because uh, you're, you're spending years learning how to hotkey codes and you're, you're spitting to the, the help file to, to read and understand it. And at one point you think, yeah, now I almost know everything. Uh, you don't find any a lot of new things anymore, and uh, now you <laughs> you need to start over again because uh, uh, again uh, a lot of uh, big differences and quite interesting uh, things. Yeah, Dimitri. So just thinking about everything you've you've learned, and I, I do want to see your converter. Don't get me wrong, but um. When you first started using it, what what were the one you know top two things that just you know really threw you for a loop that that made you you know take a step back and rethink what you were doing? Is there anything that stands out for you that was hard to get used to? Um, actually, not a lot. It's quite it's it's very easy to learn if you just yeah, the bioref variables, I found it a little bit strange. Also, um, I, I, get, I already told it to Lexicos, and we will probably change the help file so that in the declaration of the function and the, at the top, we will also add the ampersand sign because it would be more logical for people to read. If you understand what I mean, for example, if you uh, split this for example, uh, um, really, I really asked. He was just wondering why Lexicos didn't move loops over to functions, but I thought everything was a function. No, loops isn't a function. Also, if if it's also you could almost think that it's a function, but I don't think it's it's a function. It's and I tried it, but it didn't work. <laughs> it just see it's little things. No, I'm not knocking what he's doing, right? But it, it I thought everything, literally everything, was a function. So uh, when you start having things that aren't, then uh, and maybe I mean maybe he's still working on it, right? It's who, who knows. Yeah, but loop is actually yeah, it's it's a flow control, so maybe it's normal to maybe and then but also out of hotkey version two will probably also still evolve and I do I don't think that it would um it would be possible if you make it a a, a function and it wouldn't cause any uh Backwards compatible error, so maybe in the future it will become a function. Yeah, Geek Dude chimed in just saying loops as a function can get very confusing when you are expecting ramifications of scoping. So, yeah. Are we ready to see your uh, converter? Uh, yes, I actually. Let's go back to version one because we'll convert version one code. Uh, let's uh, start with something uh, message box, for example. Uh, 
So actually, I just uh, select some code, I press a hotkey, and then uh, I'll get a... But this is actually just for, for testing purposes. If it becomes better, I, I will probably make it so that you can drop a file into it, and it will convert it and display the changes. But uh, for now, I just wanted to uh, just quickly grab a script and try to convert it, see what happens. And uh, I have a function to, to run the version 1 code, uh, as you can see, and a function to run the, the converted code. And uh, I'm always happy <laughs> if it works. Um, but also, for example, here, uh, more complicated. It should also work. Huh? We'll wait till it's time out, and then it displays a correct uh, message box. But as you can see, sometimes I'll need to um, invent some methods to uh, to get the same result. For example, even in some functions, I even uh, began begin to uh, uh, declare the uh, error level variable. So if it's used afterwards, then uh, it will get the same result. My main concern: I want to convert it so it reacts the same way. Sometimes it isn't as clean code as you could write it, but it's normal. I I want to keep the script functional as far as I can go. Uh, but that doesn't mean that sometimes there are way better ways to 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 code it, of course. But I think everybody understands that it's not easy to uh, to make everything perfect. Uh, with a converter. Uh. And, and by the way, can you, uh, I assume it's out there, your converter, is that available? Can you put the link in the chat for people? Um, actually, um, yeah, I, I can put it, but my latest version, I've actually, uh, this is actually the GitHub page, but it's an older version. Um, I'm kind of bad with the uh, GitHub. I'm still learning it, and uh, uh, I've already just actually I adopted the script uh, from another guy, and I think he also adopted it from uh, somewhere else. Um, and uh, I've done some changes together with him, but at one point he said, uh, "Yeah, I'll, I'll help you, but I'll." I will not uh, continue to code, and then I was just like, okay, but then I'll work offline a little bit. It's way easier if you're not used to, to get up. Yeah. Does anyone, and I, I guess we could search for it, but I'm just curious, when did V2 begin when did he start working on that it's been a while right it... I, I don't remember when it started but it, yeah it must be a, quite a few years yep. is it maybe almost 10 years ago or something yeah most likely yeah Maybe in 12 or something like that. For example, uh, an example where I I cheat a little bit and I, I'll start to define the error level variable myself. It will um, get the same result as uh, the V1 code. And um, not, to, not to go there, but I guess I'm going to go there. Um, I know, I think it was Jeezwig and a couple other people have posted stuff to the forum on basically backporting some of the functionality to version one. So if you like some things done a certain way, you can do it in version one and get the benefit of version two. But um, when when Gabe and I were learning Python, 
we came in right when Python was switching between version two and version three. And it took years for Python for everyone to switch over. One of the biggest reasons for that was because the people kept taking the new stuff for version three and backporting it to version two and saying, oh, well, we can do all that in version two still. And, and I think it really killed people and it really hurt Python for several years where people weren't adopting it because do you, you know, it, it wasn't all of it wasn't backwards compatible, similar as what we're talking about here. And, and I think, you know, this is a good question. It's like, do we feel we're at a place once, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe it's in a year when version two is really kind of really there. Should we have a big push to, to get converted over, you know, to, to start getting everyone to switch to version two? I mean, I actually was learning on hockey when L, I'm sorry, vanilla was, you know, still around and version one wasn't really, L wasn't a thing. Um, and that was painful. Um, very confusing for people. I have to, for me, it was, I got to know it. And it was really like, oh, this is way easier. Even if I do not have a, a editor that works with the correct syntax. <laughs> yeah. I was reading Geek did saying he still has some Python 2 scripts deployed using legacy libraries for, yeah. Um, it, well, here's the, and, and someone else, and I forget if I didn't see, actually pay attention to who said it. It might have been John, maybe it was someone else. They said they have thousands, you know, and so do I. I have thousands, definitely has thousands of scripts written in, you know, ver, the older version. And that's the part of like, good Lord, do I really want to go back and have to worry about all that, you know, converting it over? Um, that's all that's all is it? Really convertible because I have a script of 40,000 lines or something. <laughs> it would be crazy to do it by hand. Uh, sure, I agree. Uh, um, somebody wants to know. Ah, it's actually quite simple. Uh, I just use uh, take this text, I write it to a file, and then I just run. Uh, the different axi auto hotkeys with uh, as argument the name of the file uh, the path of the file. <laughs> Great. Now, now, Dimitri. Now I have to go back and and change that run with that I demonstrated earlier um, to to make it allow you to say you know what version of auto hotkey right to run it with because it's exactly what I'm doing there right is just to say fit point is to a different executable uh, yeah. yeah it's also something where, where I'm still struggling uh, how to do it um, how it's easy to switch from one version to another as because you still have some great version one scripts running and you, you, I actually uh, created a, a small script that uh, would check the codes if you have written version 1 or version 2 in the first 20 lines. And then, the, uh, depending on that, it will run by a different auto hotkey version. But that is, yeah, it's not a great way to, to work on it. session is quite quite difficult that's true but i i actually i started to convert the converter to a working auto hotkey to file and that was at first it was kind of hard because the code was also quite complicated and i hadn't written it so uh, it took some time to to fix it Now, do you know, Dimitri, um, are there any like com objects that we won't have access to if we're using version two? Is it or is that all the same? It would be possible that some things have changed, but I, I would be surprised if, if you would change very dramatically. But I haven't tested, uh, I haven't played with it, uh, to be honest. Sure. But yeah. now, 
try to, to cover the, the most used functions and even sometimes I, I find in version one code a function that I never used and, and if it's hard to convert it then I'll, I'll skip them for now because it's a lot of work and if it's not used a lot I let's focus first on the on the things that are mainly used. I see Geek Dude's note about Quick Code Tasher, which is his editor that he does, is that you can you can change what version it launches in, but even though Quick Code Tester itself only runs in version one, but it allows you to launch scripts in, in version two, which is cool. Yeah, and thanks um, for following up that Geek Dude. Because I, I was just thinking also, I think com objects are kind of the, the whole, they're a translator, right? So how you connect with them, it, it I would think it should work the same with, with whatever you're using to connect to it because it's kind of the point, right? The com object stays the same regardless of what language you're using and connecting to it. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I'll also demonstrate the GUI. It's not finished yet, but... Uh, this also works quite try to run it and he'll say yeah you you don't have a button okay so this should become a function this for now yeah and you know if i was a noob looking at these two examples here i know they're not working examples but um the left side definitely looks a little cleaner right however once you start learning programming i can definitely see how the right is to me i do like functions i prefer functions over the commands yeah actually um when I created the converter, at first it still translated commands to commands, but I I changed it so it just everything as functions because I the syntax is a little bit more understandable for for us because in function it's we were used that everything is a variable, quite easy to understand, uh, yeah. Although, and, and I know um, if Isaiah was here, he would, he would, you know, yell at me so supposedly, uh, but the old way of dealing with double quotes in version one, like if you have a single double quote, you could basically define it as a, a um, what do you call it? Um, equip, not equation, uh, expression. Um, so you didn't have to use the double quotes at all, right? And, and it was so easy to work around and that goes away in version two. Um, However, you can use the single quotes, kind of like Python, right? You can use the double quotes or single quotes on the outside to define a variable, which I am looking forward to that. You want to give him an example? You understand what I was saying, Dimitri? Just to uh, show them? Yes, wait. Uh, that's, uh, make sure it's clear. That's Just false. Yeah. And I'm here to quotes. It's normally regarded as. I'm not sure if it, he has done it correctly. Box. As. That's nice. Actually, it be this. Still something I'll need to add. My understanding is on the right, you could put single quotes on the outsides of the KSD all the way to the F. So you can use either single or double quotes. So if you have a double quote inside, you could just use single quotes on the outside of the 
the text. Yes, that's how uh, P1 works. But if you use single quotes, you yeah, version it. two, you could do that, is what I was reading. I didn't try it. Uh, well, it doesn't work in version one, it works in version two. And Jean was, which I agree, um, this converter is awesome, but uh, he was just wondering, you know, what are some of the benefits of converting our stuff over and using version two? And I think it's, you know, part of it's just in the long run, more consistent, cleaner code. Yes. And of course, if you use my converter, at first it will not be cleaner because the converter is quite dumb. No worries. If you want to switch over, then I think it's nice to have. Uh... Well, and this is one of the things, especially people that are new, I don't think it's anybody in this call, right? But that are new to AutoHotKey doesn't understand when you install AutoHotKey, you get, you know, the, the Unicode, you get the version um, 32 and 64 bit and the, the ASCII version too, right? Um, when you install version two, do you know, Dimitri, does it install version one also? If we just started off and installed version two, does it come with anything else with that? No, I, I for, for as, as far as I know now, it doesn't even as a great installer yet. Okay. Okay. And it installs just uh, for, 40, uh, for uh, 64 version. Yep. I'm not sure if uh, 32 version will exist. Yeah, right. Maybe it will, but I haven't seen it yet. But I, I see that you can, can do a little, a lot more with the, the second version. So I liked it, and some problems that I encountered with the first version are way easier. For example, your GUIs, it's way easier to to manage them. And in version two, I uh, version one, I you'll you'll need to do a lot lot of tricks to yeah to handle them. And I I think it's way easier in version two. But also, if you have a lot of GUIs in your version one code, it will be very hard to, to switch over because that's the, the thing that changed the most. And even if you do not plan, even if you are saying, uh, yeah, I'm doubting to switching over. It's still interesting to learn the syntax. Mm -hmm. So you can at least try to use the same rules in your code. If you need to convert, then it's easier. Well, and I know Isaiah's on some of the stuff with our stuff, he started adopting some of the patterns um, in version one, even though we're still using it for version two, just because he's like, I want to get in the habit of it. So he started converting. And then that way, whenever we do switch, it, it's already there. I yes. think like the, the hotkey thing, he was already putting the brackets, you know, in there. Yeah, yeah that's a good practice. Also, uh, I think on the forum, I found a uh, version one library for functions. So that you right. use version two functions inside version one code. Not sure if they all worked exactly the same, but yeah, it was thanks to help the transition. So you don't need to convert your whole code at once, but 
Yeah, and start over. Yeah. Yeah, and the other really great thing is uh, it's such a lightweight program anyway, right? It's so, so small that having both isn't the end of the world. <laughs> Because the only uh, issue, I uh, it's quite hard that the uh, extensions are the same. That makes it hard to differentiate. Now between... I understand what you mean. Yes, right. Sure. But couldn't you simply change that yourself? Yeah, you, you could change it, but if, yeah. If, if you had the need for both, you, you could set uh, version two up to use a different extension and then do that on your system. Yes, yes, you could do it. But if you go to the internet, you still can download text files or uh, yeah, bits and, and then if, yeah, it would be nice if it was just a convention. We we just do it like that. I think a lot of people are now using AHA two as extension for version two. Yeah. Well, you know the other question I had because I ran into this. Like I said, I was learning when I was first learning dot notation using Auto Hotkey with uh, dot notation and and the uh, programming. It, Vanilla was still out there, and I would stumble upon posts in the forum that were with the vanilla version of AutoHotKey, and then with the L, and clearly, even though I didn't know what I was doing, clearly they were two very different structures, right? Like, it was very confusing to me. Um, what can we do other than on the forum having completely separate, you know, sub forums for your posts, which I, I guess that's probably the smartest way to do it, but, or can we have some sort of a tag or something that absolutely needs to be applied every time you make a post telling people letting them know what version because people will forget right they'll, they'll they won't mention it actually uh, there is a command line even in version one that you can hashtag requires and then you can put the the version of the your auto hotkey you, you have to run the code and then you can also say i need version two that is, I think that is the that is, that is the most universal solution up till now. But even then, um, even in the forum, it it will become uh, confused if you have one forum that will have two separate code languages. Yeah, um, and I saw really earlier really mentioned the H two also, but uh, Geek Two was saying he was saying you can have some fun with custom extensions. Um, he, he has something that instead of as a GUI, it makes it always show a command prompt when you run the script and lets you output interactively in the command prompt section in ways that you can't with the normal interpreter. Um, and the custom sections can be pretty fun. So yeah, it's an interesting, interesting way to to uh, basically. Do some logic, you know, and, and say, hey, if I'm doing this, I'll always treat it a certain way. That's pretty cool. Because I do, as much as I'm looking forward to this, it does concern me if I don't want to, I don't want anyone to experience what I felt I went through when I was first learning uh, auto hockey and uh, trying to understand the differences between the two. So if the, the more we can avoid that kind of an experience, that'd be great. Does it, do anyone have any specific questions of, you know, how does something work or anything in particular that we don't want to ask about version two of auto hotkey? I know Lex, like you said, the beta is out. He, he said, if I remember correctly, that the changes that do, that will happen with version two shouldn't break whatever you do in version two or something like that, right? That they'll be backwards compatible yes. with the other changes in version two. Even so, 
if something one thing breaks, I think it's still acceptable if it's not too much. I actually <laughs> Is Maestrit here? What's that? Is Maestrit here? No. Oh, I bet he, because um, I actually tried to um, change uh, out of the studio, so it would, uh, it would interpret it uh, out of the syntax, but I couldn't get it to work. <laughs> It gets overwhelmed by my text file to, to get the right syntax. So uh, I even spent the version 2 documentation to collect every uh, command uh, to, to try to, to get a syntax file that, that we could, I could use, but uh, I couldn't get it to work, so... I'm reading Geek to 10 years ago when I was new to auto hockey, a friend of mine suggested that I would try the L version because it had more powerful features like arrays. I thought, I already do those things with the main mainline version. Uh, what do I need L for? Um, this is why I think it'll be a long time for V2 to gain widespread popularity. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and that's, it gets back to what are really the quote unquote benefits as a programmer, the, the new functionality, new things that we're going to have access to. And it sounds like it's not clear, right? It's more about having a, a tightened up language that people will hopefully stop making fun of not that we do that right but other people will complain about inconsistencies or little quirks but that's in every darn language you know come on give me a break um but uh yeah so why should we be <laughs> yeah geek did. they absolutely make fun yeah they, they do um and rightly so in some places right it, it bothers me on some things i get a little confused but it's not the end of the world every language has their little quirks um, I pinged Maestri to see what's his plan. I know he's been really busy. I talked to him this morning on a, on a different project we're working on, but um, I didn't ask him about that. It didn't even cross my mind, ironically. Um, yes. yeah, it, if you uh, want to ask people to get to use AutoHotKey version 2, you also need to uh, get the editors that they also... Absolutely, right. That, right. That's very really important. Uh, and that you can easily search in the help files and things like that uh, with a button. Uh. Yeah, what will, and so Clive was mentioning what will the catalyst be for people moving to version two? Will it be gradual? A gra yeah, a gradual move would probably damage adoption of either version. And that was exactly my point. Actually, I think you joined after I was saying that. Um, when, when we were learning Python, we were right in that, and that really slowed down Python for a, the whole, both language, and you're spot on, both languages, I'm sorry, both versions. Um, it, it really caused a lot of problems in the communities or people, just a lot of stuff. Um, and I'm just trying to think of what can we do to help avoid that kind of mess. Yeah, that's also the reason why I started the converter, because I think it can be a great help for people to, even if it doesn't work absolutely fully, if it works most of the time, or if it can give you a hint how you need to make it, and if it does the most of the work, then it's already a great help. Uh, it, you know, it, Dimitri, it's kind of funny, but it's exactly how I program, right, without a hockey. I don't automate the entire thing. Right. I automate, you know, a, a little bit of it, which is usually like 80 percent of the work. And then, you know, I mainly take care of the other stuff. And so, yeah, that's exactly how I, I do most of my stuff, because automating the entire thing is just a crap load of work. And to me, rarely is it worth all that effort.
Decky, what are your thoughts, man? You've been... Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I must say, I'm just sitting here and, and reading the V2 documentation just because oh. the ampersand just irritates the, <laughs> I don't know, out of me. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure I read up on it to, to know about it. So other than that, I didn't listen to the last maybe three minutes or something. Well, we, we were just talking in general. What do you think, you know, are people going to, you think AutoHockey version 2 will get adopted swiftly? Is there anything we can do to help encourage that? What are the benefits? Like, why why should we? I, I think there's a big difference between the benefits of AutoHockey in general versus each individual, right? The, the language itself, it's tighter and it'll be cleaner and, you know, uh, it'll be a little more consistent for people to learn. But on... I don't see any huge benefits of learning things, you know, I'm sorry, of, of things working faster or having access to things we didn't have access to before. Yeah, I'd, I'd say one of the things that I think will be hard is making existing users switch to version two. Um, because I've, I've yet to find a truly compelling argument for why to make the switch. Yeah, there, there might be some speed uh, improvement or there might be some consistency improvements. But other than that, just like the old vanilla um, uh, to to one conversion was the scripts people had, they worked. Why, why would they convert as long as it worked? Uh, what version 2 can do for us, it can maybe keep uh, some kind of interest from Lecticos' side. Uh, he can probably do more and better things with the code base for two than he could with one. And other things like that. So new scripts, new projects, new people coming into our hotkey. But the problem is we don't control how people come into our hotkey. They often search for something end up on a page or a chat or somewhere else uh, far off, find an example, download it, run it, and they're off with version one. They then use their very new excited uh, script and they take all of this new excitement for the automation they've just learned they can do, look up, do more things from wherever they got the stuff and end up learning a good amount of one. And then they figure out that, oh, there is a two, it's a beta. And people are not sure if they're really converting over or what's the benefits. So we'll see the exact same thing as we did with vanilla. We, we won't see a big shift into two uh, in any fast way whatsoever. As long as you can find examples of one, and as long as you will have who knows how many uh, script examples all around the AutoHotKey community that are still done in one, then users will still keep using one. Yeah, but I, I think you made a couple excellent points, one of which I hadn't thought of at all, which you uh, recently because you and I talked about this maybe a year ago was with Lexicos doing most of the heavy lifting and and I don't blame him he, he doesn't get paid for this stuff right he's he spends a lot of time he's doing the stuff you know and he, he has interest in what he wants to work on right so and and, and actually I would even say because I know you and I talked about this too with the whole like Windows 8 and 7 and 8 and then pushing out 10 they they purposely went out and tried to migrate as many people as they could to help negate that's supporting multiple languages forever, like XP stuck around, right? So I, I think that's a very valid point of, boy, you know, in the long run, if we are gonna switch, we really should do it as fast and hard as possible, uh, probably. Um, not that I'm saying we do that now, but when we do make that decision, it needs to, we need to have a community-wide effort, but you bring up some big points of, if there's still access and how would we ever lose access to all those we'd have to go back and actually convert use you know a, a, an advanced one that dimitri went you know in version three or four of where it's doing a lot more go and actually convert the old stuff 
out there to have a new version working in it in version two, right? Which yeah, is- but we're we're getting close to what ten, twenty years, whatever, about a hotkey time, and the first six years or so was mostly vanilla, and then the rest of them has been one for the most part. Then there's some H and there's some iron and there's all kinds of other stuff out there. And somehow forcing people onto two or getting them to adopt that first, it, it's a really daunting task. It's uh, the best we can probably do is in chats and here on, on our uh, different types of stuff. We can try and push it. And the first page on arhatki.com can have that as the pushed uh, version. Then, yeah, maybe we can make some kind of, of dent into people converting over to two. But because the internet is filled with stuff that works with one, it, it's it's going to be hard. Well, I... I don't disagree with 99% of what you just said. The only, the biggest one I would say, compared to other languages, auto hockey, yes, auto hockey is on a lot of different places. However, mostly it's on a couple select ones, right? Especially I would say like the Reddit and the forum, auto hockey forum, right? Are the two to me ones that have, you know, and I guess Stack Overflow and Discord, but. Um, and specialized websites. And what? Jack Dunning's website, for example. Yeah, but it, it's, Compared to the bulk of it, right? That's I, I know. Like I said, I know there's one-offs, and, and mine's a while. Auto, the automator is a, a one-off, right? I, I'm just saying, compared to look at Python or something, right? It's you know the vast majority of code is in a very select few places that supposedly we might control or at least have a big influence in that we could do. But anyway, I, I still get your point, Jackie. Um, Let's and- say we did manage to make a ninety-nine percent foolproof converter or set up the conversion rules so completely that we could do it correctly in almost all cases, then we could ask Tank to run it on the forum and mark the version one and put a new code box below it with the version two, whatever. Who knows? Stuff like that would probably be needed to remove the almost a hundred thousand examples of version one code that are on just the forum. And that's within our control sphere. The stuff that's outside of that on people's GitHubs and on people's blogs and on who knows one minute code and it, it's everywhere when looking at our hotkey as a thing, I do know that Python and C++ and whatever are on even more places, but just in our small space, it's still spread out quite a lot. It is, I'm just saying compared compared to Python and other languages, it's not as drastic. It's not as fragmented. However, anyway, um, yeah. I think Clive had a good point of, you know, if we can get kind of do like what you just said on the forum, if we had a, a, a tool to do that and then have, you know, select developers that are doing some cool stuff, just do stuff in version two, right? That, that could help nudge people. Um, and you could also set a point where if you could just set up rules to check if it was most likely version one code in a post, you could still run some kind of batch job that would put a notification on the code box hmm. that this box probably uh, holds version one code again just to kind of nudge people into knowing which version they're at least trying to use code from but yeah yeah and that that was one of my big issues before was lord it was confusing of what was i looking at you know, and like you said, in some things it's very obvious where you don't even need what you're saying. But if you're new, you, you really do, right? You need that thing. Um, but but I still think it gets back to without actually real new functionality that we don't have in version one, it's going to be hard. Yeah, I'd say some of the things that Lectico's implemented in one one or or one, um, 
I think they drove a lot of people over. I think someone in the chat said the same thing. Uh, I would probably have had a harder time of choosing when I came into it because people had accepted 1.1 uh, at that point, Nekticos' version, as being a bit superior to the other one. It was still debated, but for the most part, people were in agreement that 1.1 one, one was just a little bit simpler when working with Calm and stuff like right. that. And the objects was a nice add-on. There wasn't too much functionality written for them at the time, but that came along. But with 2, I'm currently still stumped on what is it doing for me. Right? It, it's, yeah... I can read both of these examples here uh, just fine. I, I, I'm used to the old way of auto hotkey looking, so the new way of it looking is okay. It's more functiony, but that's that's about it. Awesome. Well, let me um, we're at a good kind of stopping point. Let me stop the recording in uh, or yeah, let me just stop the recording. We'll start it back up. In.